My name is uh, Pierre Barini. I'm a professor at the University of Ottawa. I work uh, in the School of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science uh, in the Department of Physics and uh, I'm the director of the Center for Research in Photonics at the University of Ottawa. Uh, my research field is plasmonics. Um, this is the optics of metallic nanostructures and how one can create uh, useful and uh, uh, interesting devices by using uh, such, uh, such metallic nanostructures. We've been involved in plasmonics since uh, the late 90s um, and in fact in the late 90s we were still sort of late in the game. There was uh, maybe 30 or 40 years ago uh, fairly robust activity around um, surface plasmons as it was called uh, back then, surface plasmon photonics, uh, where research was essentially confined to uh, investigating metal films and how uh, surface plasmons could be guided and propagated on metal films. Uh, that research uh, sort of peaked in the 80s, 90s if you look at the number of publications and then uh, went quiet for, for some years and then popped up again in the mid 2000s um, as folks uh, gained access to nanofabrication tools, uh, to better modeling techniques, uh, to more powerful computers and this sort of reopened the field where now um, utilizing nanostructures was, was really the focus, whereas uh, in the past usal, utilizing films uh, on prisms, for example, was, was the primary focus. Uh, applications uh, have certainly drawn more and more researchers to the field. Uh, the idea of uh, having light confined uh, below the diffraction limit, for example, to create uh, nanoscale structures that manage light, that deal with light, that uh, carry out operations on light are, are really quite compelling. Um, with plasmonics you can, you can break this uh, uh, fundamental barrier and, uh, and really achieve uh, quite tiny uh, functions uh, on chips. We have an interest in fundamentals but we are primarily driven by applications. One application area of quite strong uh, current interest for us and uh, among the community in general is uh, surface plasmon lasers and amplifiers where we uh, are interested in having surface plasmons as the lasing wave uh, to enable uh, small, tiny uh, nanoscale sources of light. Another uh, large area um, of activity within my group is uh, surface plasmon optoelectronics where we are uh, very interested in creating uh, tiny uh, and better optoelectronic devices uh, using plasmonic means. Um, so we use uh, things like uh, optical nano antennas or nano gratings to try and make better modulators, better photodetectors, uh, higher responsivities, faster speeds, etc. And uh, a third area um, of, of activity within my group involves using plasmons for biosensors. There we are interested in integrating microfluidics with chemistries, with uh, surface plasmons on gold films to uh, create uh, better biosensors uh, on the one hand and on the other hand to explore uh, new sensing applications with, uh, with the biosensors. For example, we have uh, an ongoing project which uh, is led by one of my PhD students, Weiru Wong. Uh, she is a PhD student from the University of Malaysia and uh, with uh, Weiru we've been able to demonstrate the detection of dengue antibodies in uh, patients that are infected uh, with the disease by using the virus itself as the uh, recognition means. I got interested in, in the dengue detection problem a few years ago when I visited uh, Malaysia. Um, I was uh, invited to tour several universities in Malaysia and meet with uh, colleagues and professors there and, as well as students. And there I discovered that uh, dengue was quite prevalent. Um, it affects uh, something like uh, 500 million uh, people per year um, and in Malaysia it's a it's a big problem um, and so one one issue uh, related to managing uh, the proliferation of dengue is to uh, be able to rapidly screen patients to determine whether they're infected with the uh, illness or not or the virus in particular or not um, and so in order to do screening you need low cost uh, very inexpensive and rapid detection technologies uh, because uh, clinical approaches that are very costly uh, are not applicable or practical if you want to screen in, in the numbers of, of patients that we, we are you know, sort of talking about. Uh, 
uh, half a million uh, cases per year is, is really quite a lot of, uh, of infections to have to track. And so to screen for, for this infection, you need low-cost, uh, rapid detection technologies that are specifically geared towards uh, the te that particular uh, detection problem. And, uh, and so we got interested in this uh, with our technology. Uh, we're working with medical uh, collaborators from Malaysia through uh, my, my, my grad student, uh, Wei Ru. Uh, we have access to the virus. We have access to patient samples, um, negative and positive patients. And that uh, has been key to advancing uh, the study. In the case of, of dengue detection, um, what we do is we, we, well, we do one of two things, of, of either two things. We mobilize the dengue virus itself uh, on our gold waveguides, and then we flow on there uh, the patient samples. These are patient blood plasma samples. Uh, or we do the opposite. We mobilize the patient blood sample on the waveguide and flow the virus on top. Um, and if, if the patient has antibodies formed against that particular virus, then uh, binding occurs on the surface of the waveguide, and we see this as a change in optical intensity. So you can carry that uh, detection principle over to other diseases. Um, so Ebola uh, is a virus as well, um, and one in principle could immobilize the virus on the waveguide and then follow essentially the same approach to see if, to see if it can pick up um, antibodies against this particular virus. So the, so the next step is to, is to look at how we can move that detection solution into something that is handheld, cheap and expensive, um, and fully integrated, sort of a turnkey solution. So there's a lot of engineering left to take this from you know, the lab bench into uh, the initial uh, phase of a, of, a, of a product.